Sup, Chooms? How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, I know what you guys are thinking right now, but Kevin, you said your next video was going to be on skincare. Yes, yes, I know, but don't worry. That video is still on the way, Chooms. But hold the presses, because we've got some breaking news about creatine and hair loss. It turns out that what I've been saying for years now, which is that creatine does not cause hair loss, has now been officially verified through a new high-quality study that just came out this this month. So here's a study dated April 23rd, 2025. It's titled, quote, Does Creatine Cause Hair Loss? A 12-week randomized control trial, unquote. So notice how the study is described as a double-blinded randomized control trial. We've had research done on creatine and hair loss before, but never anything nearly as high quality as this. The authors of the study even point this out by mentioning that up until this point, there hasn't been any real high quality research on creatine and hair loss. There was just this one study here, the so-called rugby study that was published way back in 2009. This rugby study has caused more fear to the hair loss community than perhaps any other piece of research in hair loss history. 16 years later, this study gets cited all the goddamn time as evidence that creatine causes hair loss, even though the study is complete crap and I've gone over it many times before. In fact, I'll go ahead and link all my previous videos I've done over the years on creatine and hair loss below in the description if you want a refresher. But to summarize this rugby study, it was just a three-week study, and in the study, the rugby players got a loading dose of creatine at 25 milligrams per day for a week, and then followed by two weeks of creatine at five grams per day. So basically a typical loading phase and then a maintenance phase of creatine. The results showed a 40% increase in serum DHT levels after three weeks of use of creatine. The study didn't look at hair growth, since three weeks is way too short of a time for anything to have an effect on hair growth, which is something I talked about in a recent video. So the study didn't actually prove anything at all, but the 40% increase in DHT this rugby study mentioned did raise some fears that creatine could perhaps cause hair loss. So this is a new and much, much better study, which is from Iran. It is the first study to look at creatine and whether or not it increases DHT and causes hair loss over the long term. The study was a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study, this is a top-notch study design. There were 45 men enrolled in the study, and 38 men ended up completing the study. The men had all undergone resistance training prior to the study. Their ages varied from 18 to 40 years old. They were randomized to get either creatine at a dose of 5 milligrams per day or a placebo. The creatine was started without an initial loading dose, which is different from the rugby study that did use a loading dose. None of the men were on any hair loss treatments. Blood work and hair trichograms were done before the start of the treatment and after 12 weeks of treatment. This table shows the baseline characteristics of the two study groups. There were no significant differences between the groups and their baseline characteristics. This figure shows the overall results on hormone levels. In both groups, there was an overall slight increase in total testosterone levels and a slight decrease in free testosterone levels over the course of the study. The DHT levels were stable over time. There was no difference between the two groups in any of these hormone levels. In other words, creatine did not affect DHT levels at all compared to placebo. As to why the serum testosterone and free testosterone changed in both groups, the authors speculated that this might have been a seasonal change in testosterone levels, which is something that has been reported before. In any case, creatine did not have any additional effect on these levels and didn't affect DHT whatsoever. The other major result was the effect of creatine on hair growth. Specifically, there was no effect at all. Hair growth parameters were exactly the same in the creatine group as they were in the placebo control group. So, the study concludes by saying, quote, these results refute the common claim that creatine causes baldness, unquote. Now, one potential objection to this study is that several of the authors reported connections with the supplement industry, though the study itself was not funded by the industry. However, that doesn't matter in the slightest, though, because this is not a retrospective or case control study, which are the types of studies most susceptible to bias. This was a double-blinded control trial, which means that bias couldn't impact the results, even if there was bias. So, this is definitely a high-quality study, and the outcome of this study is high-quality evidence. 
evidence. So I think this is very good evidence that creatine does not increase serum DHT, nor does it cause hair loss. This is so far the highest quality data we have, and it concludes that creatine doesn't cause hair loss. The only other randomized control trial on creatine and DHT was the rugby study, which was only a three-week study that used a high loading dose of creatine. So this is terrific news for creatine users, because frankly, creatine is a fantastic ergogenic aid, especially for athletes who do a lot of anaerobic training like resistance training or sprinting, and that's because creatine increases production of adenosine triphosphate, which is why athletes who use it will be able to handle more volume in the gym and have better overall strength endurance. I've used it before personally, and I do like it, although I don't currently use it, I have to admit, and that's because I have trouble taking it without gagging since the texture and taste is just so disgusting for me. It does go down a little bit easier if I mix it with a beverage that tastes good like orange juice or a soft drink, but it is still pretty hard for me to use it consistently. But the performance enhancing benefits of creatine have been scientifically verified many times and now its users can rest assured that they will not be putting their hair at risk while using it. So to all my fellow hair loss switchers out there, next time you're brewing a Thunderbolt potion, don't hesitate to add a little creatine to the mix as well. You'll be thankful that the gym gains you make won't have to come at the expense of your hair gains. All right, so with that, the skincare video is coming next, Jooms. So I'll see you all next time. God bless.